Good morning. Mark Carlisle here from the Christ United Methodist Church video team ministry. I know the sunglasses look a little odd, but they're part of the props for today. As we take a journey, and that journey is to study light. I mean, we're all familiar with things relevant to light to some degree, sunglasses. I have a light here that I can turn on relevant to the video, and it makes me a little brighter. We have flashlights. We have candlelight. And even now we have real fancy lights that are LED lights. And I won't turn this on because it would probably distort the picture quite a bit. We have laser lights that are used to cut through steel. Celestial lights to give us guidance at night. and Moonlight for those of you who love the night skies and our romantics. But what is light? When used as a noun, it is the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible for us. Light is what's called an electromagnetic wave. It's a form of radiation. Light can be used as a noun, an adjective, or a verb. It can mean bright or not heavy. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 of the Bible, God says, Let there be light. And there was light. God spoke and light became dominant over darkness. And when God had created the light, he saw that it was good. Genesis chapter 1, verse 4. Now, let's examine something else about light. So I got a lot of toys here today. And I hope you stay with me throughout the journey because the light that we receive from God and the light that we're so familiar with on earth are so amazing to me. For example, this is an acrylic light tube. It's solid. It's not a glass tube. It's acrylic, but it is solid. And if I take a small flashlight, such as this one, and attach it to the end of this light tube. Yeah, the light tube gives off a little bit of light, but look what it does at the end. Look how it illuminates and bends that light right through the tube, and it comes out the other end. I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on, and look how that light bends all the way through that tube and comes out the other end. Isn't that amazing? How about the spectrum of light? Everybody's familiar with the fact that if you take a prism, you can take white light, regular flashlight, sunlight, and turn it into the colors of the rainbow. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Some of you have even taken your hose in the summertime and sprayed your flowers and saw the spectrum of the rainbow coming through those spectacles of water. What about the speed of light? This is something our little minds probably can't even comprehend. But light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Yeah. Stars that you see tonight could have burned out, even though the light is still traveling towards us, because they are light years, light years away from us. Aren't these amazing facts? Well, let's take it another look at a very common light that we probably don't understand very well. Recently, our house received a cable. This cable is for internet, telephone, TV, all of the above, if you want it to be. So I was amazed as I talked to the technician 
and learned about this cable coming into our home. It's mostly to protect something on the inside. All of this is not the part that distributes the light through that little tiny glass tube, similar to this acrylic tube. So I've turned the other end of this round and I've removed it by parts. There's a little part along the side edge and it's called a copper tracer. So if they ever have to trace it underground, since it's a copper wire, they can use a device and find out where it's buried. That's not the optic. You can take that off and throw it away. And the optic's still there. Then if I peel off more of the insulation, I find that there's a glass, fiberglass rod. Not one, but two. One on each side of what you would think would be the optic fiber. But it's not. Inside this piece of insulation, there's another tube of insulation that's even smaller. And we're still not to the optic fiber. In fact, I can't even strip this insulation back far enough with my limited tools to show you that fiber. But it's about the size of a human hair. Can you imagine that? All of your TV communications and internet come through this little tiny fiber of light. Now I want you to correlate that. Imagine the light of God, which is Jesus Christ. Sometimes we think we're sm so smart because we can invent things like this or discover things like this. But the reality is that God created all of these things and allowed us to discover them in due time. Did you hear that? God created all things. We merely stumble across them by accident or exploring with our minds, given to us by God, to ask the question, what if, and you fill in the blank. I leave you with one thought as you explore the light of God and compare it to the fiber optic in your television or bringing the television channels to your house. When you're watching TV tonight, even if you don't have optic fiber, you still have TV waves coming through the air to bring you those stations. I'd like you to take a second when you turn on that remote control and remember God's light. His Word, His Son, and the Holy Spirit are there to illuminate you to His love, a love that will never fail or forsake you, a love that created all of the things of the world and gave man dominion over them. Unfortunately, man has failed to be satisfied with God's love and was forced from the Garden of Eden by his sin. But God still had a plan to reunite us with himself through the baby Jesus. Believe on him with all your heart as your Savior who died for you and I and experience his light in a world of darkness. Remember, think about the light this evening 
when you turn on your TV. And remember how smart we think we are with those things that we've invented. But yet God gave them all to us before we were ever born. So that we could discover not only those things, but the true light of his love. Until next time, have a blessed day.